So hello everyone, welcome back to Scalar Academy YouTube channel. So in this tutorial, we will be solving another most frequently asked interview question named longest common subsequence. First of all, we will be discussing about approach of this particular uh, problem and then we will be writing the recursive code. Then we will be uh, optimizing that recursive code using dynamic programming. When I say dynamic programming, we are using two techniques, both uh, like um, memoization and uh, tabulation. So please watch this video till the end okay so if you are visiting channel for the first time please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video please hit that like that button and if you have any queries please let us know in the comment section so the problem statement uh, will looks like this okay so you will be given a two strings let's say s1 and s2 okay um let's say a b c d e another string as a b d e x okay so as you can see the length of the strings might uh, differ okay from each other and both are not same okay and you need to figure out longest common subsequence when i say subsequence what does it mean okay let's say so in this example let's say so a b and b so here the whatever the order okay let's say a and b and b are matching okay so the next element is a d okay so where does that uh, d exist so right after b right so not in the order but yes it has occurred after b yes here so now e again d after so x there is no x here so the longest common subsequence was a three here. Now let's take another example. Say x, y, z, a, b, c, and here um, b, a, c. Okay, b, a, c. Now what is the longest common subsequence here? B and b. Okay, one. Okay, fine. A and here, here. So both are here b, a, and here a, b. So these both are not subsequence, okay? These both are not subsequence, but individually this can be a subsequence, right? B alone can be a subsequence, A alone can be a subsequence, right? Now let's take C, okay? C here, C. So C is alone is a subsequence. Yep. So by combining B A C, we do have any subsequence? Uh, no. We do have any subsequence with B C? Yes. Two. and we do have any subsequence with AC yes check two so the longest subsequence that for this particular example was two okay hope you figure out okay let me tell you another example as well let's say a b c and another one was empty okay now tell me what is the longest subsequence here so obviously zero okay hope you have understood the problem statement okay now Pause the video for a while come up with an brute force approach what you can think of okay i will tell you i will give you a hint okay think in an recursive manner recursive manner recursive manner recursive okay yep. let's start okay so we'll uh we'll be discussing uh, three approaches okay three solutions for this okay so basically two one with a recursion another one with a dp okay so when i say dp it is a both a memoization and a tabulation what does this a memoization stands for if you don't know what is a memoization that's okay fine i will tell you i will give you a glance about it okay so a memoization means uh, you will write a recursive code hope you know recursion you will write a recursive code okay so you will be uh, trying to memoize the answer which you have um, already computed okay so basically we will be having a few concepts like overlapping sub problems okay i will tell you what is overlapping sub problems are during our discussion okay 
of uh, recursion tree okay we'll try to uh, avoid that particular problem so that is what dp stands for okay so using using the pre computed value or already computed value to compute the current values so that is what a simply dp stands for okay and we will be uh, doing this uh, with the recursive code only okay we won't write any loops here okay but when it comes to tabulation we will be writing a loops okay so basically it's an iterative code okay yep well this is a glance and again i'm using a top down recursion top down recursion so it can be done both bottom up and top down but um so <laughs> it's your choice okay what you can come up with okay so after watching this video you can do uh, both things that's not a big deal okay i will tell you okay i will write in code as well okay for both of the things so without wasting any time let's get into the solution so first recursion solution okay i will write uh, one example here for our um, recursion tree let's say uh, let me tell you i will pick up my name from c okay and uh, let's say a s x okay so i will write let me write sizes as well indexes okay these are all the indexes as well now i will try to um, make a recursive tree so if you don't know what is a recursive tree okay i i highly recommend you to watch my previous video which i have made on recursion okay so that you will get a glance of uh, what is the recursion tree how to make that recursion tree okay so in this uh, video i will be just uh, going through the solution okay so a recursion tree means uh, it's uh, like a steps okay it contains all the steps how i am traveling through the uh, particular uh, like how i am traveling through entire solution that's it okay in simpler case okay so let's say uh, i'm assuming uh, i have an function called lcs and i will be passing my indexes where i have to start from okay since i stated already i'm using a top down uh, a recursion so I, I will be starting from the bottom okay like start in the end okay so the indexes are 4 comma 2 4 comma 2 now okay let me change my string to here i as well okay so instead of three i will say four three four. okay now tell me so i and i both are equal both are equal so here we will be having a different cases first case is a uh, carrot both indexes are same okay so both character values indexes are same so here okay i will write the cases while solving the problem okay so as of now we have encountered one case so that is both the characters are same so i and i so it means that it might be my uh it might include in my subsequence do you agree everyone yes right so now what i do so i simply i have to move forward yes i have to simply move forward both of my pointers okay so i will make my index as lcs of 3 comma 2 done done okay now cool so now let's see s and x so is both are same no no so the case here was second case was not same then what we need to do so if both are not same what we need to do so let's say here here so uh if i increase my if i decrease my pointer from uh 2 to 1 2 to 1 so i'm not see i'm not decreasing my um one c's pointer okay it is uh, still staying at 3 only i'm just decreasing my uh, uh second pointer which is um from 2 to 1 now both are forming one subsequence yes okay cool so it means that i am saying that so i have to move only one either of the one okay so in this case it is uh, i am moving second pointer so in some cases i have to move 
my first pointer as well right so here i will be having two conditions so either move first point second thing either otherwise or move second point so there are the two choices i have so basically by when i said dp problem it's all about choices you are going to make okay so now what i am doing so uh, first i don't know what exactly happening over there so i will just keep on trying all the possibilities i have okay so what are all the possibilities i have no i have two possibilities one is move my pointer up or uh, pointer one down or i have to move my pointer do down okay so let's say uh, first i will move my uh, first pointer to the right okay so already i am at 3 and 2 if i move my uh, first pointer it will be 2 comma 2 okay so if if i don't want it to move my uh, first pointer i have another choice called move my second pointer which is 3 comma 1 earlier i am at 3 comma 2 i have to move to 3 comma 1 okay done as of now clear okay now let's see so i am at 2 and 2 so m and x so both are same and no both are not same again i have two options what are the, the options so i can either move to the right okay so i move my point of one to the right let's say if i move that one comma two otherwise lcs of two comma one now again so now again so one and two one and two so a and x both are same no again i have two options lcs of zero comma two lcs of one comma one done so next so again so zero and two uh yes zero and a and x both are not same yep. so again i have two options minus one two or uh zero one done okay now i have came here now tell me now tell me is there any index called a minus one no no we all know that index has last from zero only so whenever i have came to uh index less than zero there is nothing okay simply i i will say um return zero okay return zero cool return zero now i have only this substring i will go and traverse through this okay so zero and one so both are not equal v and s are not equal again i have two options ls of minus one one less of zero zero okay so again i came up with minus one so there is nothing here so i will simply return zero and here zero and zero so a and uh, a, v and a so both are not equal again i have two options lcs of minus one zero or lcs of zero comma minus one so in both the cases i will return zero since i have uh, reached minus one or minus one so if either of the indexes are minus one i have to return zero okay now done done with this and done with this now now what next so here i am returning some values here so which one do i need to consider let's say uh in one of the one of the sub three okay either right or left i got one subsequence since i am looking for the longest subsequence what i can do since i am traveling from the end or if you are it doesn't matter if you are starting from the start as well doesn't matter so if i got any subsequence which one do i need to return so i need to return a max of zero uh, anything right so i am pretty much sure that in one of the ways i will definitely reach a zero right if one of the ways i will definitely reach zero because that is a base case that is what you will end up with okay so if i whatever if i get anything at the right hand side which is a greater than zero or let's say one and two as well so i have to consider longest longest so i need to consider a max so here i will return 
max among both the subtrees right max among both the subtrees what is the max among both so zero okay i will return zero here so again zero and zero i will return max so again it's a zero now it has max okay so zero so it will return zero now i have to solve this particular subsequence okay uh yeah there is no space at all let's see okay so uh one and one so a and yes both are not equal yes lcs of uh zero one and another one was lcs of one comma zero okay so we know the answer of a zero and one right like uh, here so we a zero and one both are not equal so it will return zero only okay since we have computer since uh, we have we don't have uh, much space i'm just utilizing that okay so zero and uh, i will return zero here in this case as well one and zero did we compute that no okay let's see so here one and here zero so a and a both are equal a and a both are equal it means that you have to compute one okay you have to return one you got something right so it means that we have to make another call with one plus lcs of you have to decrease both you have to move up forward like we have to come to down okay so a zero and minus one okay so we have seen a minus one in one of the cases so we will return zero here for this thing for sure okay so one plus zero it says one okay we will return one here and a right side zero left side one so what i did what i told earlier you have to return the max 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 right so you will return one here so uh here you have zero and here you have one so you will consider max one now let's go and solve this particular problem so two one one what is it two one one as a two m and one as s okay so uh, let me draw that to lcs of two comma one here okay Sorry. yeah now so let me write the indexes are uh, zero one two three four zero one two three okay so two one one m yes both are not equal so i have two options what are the options i'll say soft i can move a left so one comma one and i can do i'll say soft two comma zero now if i do one and one so one one e and a oh, sorry a and s both are not equal so what i can say so uh i can again move either left I can move again either right okay so zero and one again both are not equal so lcs of minus one comma one lcs of zero comma zero so it will return zero since you have a no minus one index okay now again zero and zero both are not equal so you will return a zero again so top is a zero now you will go on this side and one and a zero so both are equal so you will return one and you will go to our next index uh zero comma minus one so we have seen minus one so again it will return zero only so that's why i have directly written minus one here okay sorry plus one okay sorry so now again uh max among these was one now i will traverse through this lcs of two comma zero two comma zero m and a so both are not equal what you will do so you will decrease these things okay so lcs of 1 comma 0 lcs of a 2 comma minus 1 okay so since you have seen minus 1 it will be returning 0 only and here 1 comma 0 so 1 and 0 yes it has seen s1 so it will return 1 so max among these 1 and 0 are 1 so max among these was 1 so it means that LCS of two comma one is returning one. 
returning one. So here uh, LCS of one comma two returning one, LCS of two comma one returning one. So max among these was one. So you will return one here. Now your job is to calculate for three comma one. Okay, three comma one. Okay, let's go and see this. LCS of three comma one. So one C. Yeah. Is that this one? Oh, okay, sorry. Yes. Okay. Now, so three and one. So three and one, not equal. So what? What are the two choices you have? You can either move left or you can move right. Okay. Okay. Now, so two and one. Two and one. Both are not equal. Again, you have a two choices. LCS of one comma one. LCS of two comma zero. So one comma one not equal. Okay. Again, you will be having two choices. Zero comma one. Both are not equal. So you will say again you will be having two choices LCS of one comma one and LCS of a zero comma zero. Okay. So since it has seen minus one, there is no index called minus one. So you will return a zero here. And zero comma zero both are equal. No. So you will return again zero here. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. You will make another choices minus one or zero. LCS of zero comma minus one. So since you have seen minus one, you will return zero a zero. Okay. So max among this was again zero. So it will return max a zero. Now you will compute one comma zero. So one and zero. So both are equal, right? A and A. So you will be having only one condition called both decrease of both. Okay. And you will have plus one as well. And here zero and zero both are equal and no. So you will be having again two conditions minus one and zero and zero and minus one. Okay. So since it has seen minus one, you will return zero and zero. Okay. So it will again return max. So it will be one plus zero. It is again one. So one max of zero comma one, it will return one only. Now two comma zero LCS of two comma zero. So, <coughs> so I think we have already computed that. Okay, it, he is returning a one only. Okay, so I'm simply gonna make it one. So max of these things it will be one, and let's say LCS of three comma zero. So did I compute that already? Did I made uh, okay? So LCS of three comma zero. One C A S X I. Okay. So three and a zero. Both are not equal. So again, it means that I have two options. LCS of two comma zero. LCS of three comma minus one. Okay, since I have seen minus one, I can simply say return zero. So now let's compute for this LCS of two comma zero. Okay, so two comma zero m one y both are not equal. Yes, I have again two choices LCS of one comma zero and LCS of two comma minus one. Okay, so one comma zero both are equal. Yes, both are equal. So I will return a one plus LCS of a zero comma zero, sorry zero comma minus one. So since it has seen minus one, I will simply return zero. So it's a one plus zero, it's a one. Now I will have seen minus one here, so I will return simply zero. So one plus uh, one max of one comma zero, it's a one. 
so it will return one now our max of one comma zero it's a one so it means that lcs of three comma zero returning one okay it is returning one cool now it means a max of uh, it will return one only so it means that here it will return one so here what is the max here so it is saying that both are equal and it means that um, it will return one plus uh, max among these oh, sorry yeah max among these it's a one right it's a max among these were one so it will return one plus already we have one so it is a combination right one plus one it's a two and here again you will be having one so it's a three so that is what the answer says to that right a yes i asi is a subsequence okay now so we have seen all these uh, recurrence relations it's a little mess yeah little mess here so but it's okay okay so we'll now try to uh, remember the steps i hope you guys are remember the steps and now we'll try to um, write the recurrence relations and convert that into the recursive code okay we'll convert that into the recursive code So what does it looks like? So basically, let's say we have LCS function, okay, where we will be having a uh, taking n and m, so which are both are uh, the starting and the last number. So what will be the, our base condition? So whenever we have seen anything less than zero, zero, we are saying that return zero. So done. This is our base case. Is there anything that we are stopping? No. Now, if this is not the case, we are checking with either like S1. So string 1, n double equal to string 2 of m. Basically, I am checking both the characters. So if this is the case, what I am returning? I am returning 1 plus LCS of I am decreasing both the indexes, right? n minus 1 and m minus 1. This is what I'm doing. Now else, else, else. So else, I have two other conditions. What is move left? So I'm considering the left subtree. What is the left subtree? So I'm decreasing my first string pointer. Okay. I'm not adding anything. So LJS of uh, n minus one comma m. I'm putting that my second index pointer at the same place. Okay. And I'm moving. And in the right, I have another option called in the right LCS of I will be sticking at the same in this uh, string one, but I am decreasing my string two point. Yes. Now at the end, after this computing these things, what I am doing? I am returning max of left and right. Done. So in the whole process, this is what I am doing. Yes, this is our recursive code. Okay, now let's uh, discuss the code. Okay, let's try to code the what we have discussed in the solution. <coughs> so first, you will be required to accept the input, uh, which is uh, two strings. Okay, so C okay. then you need to have uh, the length of both the strings. Now you need to compute your answer. I will be storing that recursive answer in my solution answer. Then LCS of n minus one. So why n minus one? Since if you have computed size, let's say if it is, if it contains a five five characters in the string, 
then the index would be n minus one. So uh, since I'm starting a uh, right a uh, start for uh, like end from end of the string, it will be n minus one, then m minus one, s one and s two. So at the end you will print that answer. Let's try to go on, create the function for so it will return int okay, it will return the longest um, common subsequence and it will be taking n then string s1 string s2 first you need to write the base cases the base cases so if either of my indexes if either of my indexes are less than zero if either of my indexes are less than zero i need to say return a zero so that will be my base case if if this has been the, not the case i have to consider case one so if you have remembered we will be having two cases first case is when my string like character both the characters are equal so if both the characters are equal what i am doing so i will just return one plus i'm moving both my pointers down at the same time and minus one and minus one s1 and s2 if this is not the case what is the case two so just return you can consider uh you will be taking a left so left subtree okay what will be the left sub -tree? so i will be moving my uh, first pointer down it means that n minus one and i'm keeping my m same at the same position where i'm currently now so m s1 and s2 and i'm moving at my right a uh, subtree lcs of n comma n minus one s one comma s two so at the end what i am doing i am just returning max of these left comma right sub so this is what i am doing right so let's simply uh, try to run this code okay so ah uh, yeah give, let's do some inputs a b c d e was a b d e okay so the expected answer would be three here right so yeah the answer is building hope we will get the answer so i'm unable to see any errors though <coughs> yeah <coughs> this answer is three we got it we got it now um let's try to figure out the complexity of this particular approach what will be the time complexity first so here so we'll be having a three loops but it's an if and else so we, i'm pretty much sure that either either of the block will be get executed so and uh you have to consider the max scenario so let's assume you have uh, been calling always uh, two calls okay so left and right then you will be having two choices okay for each combination you will be having two choices okay how many combinations you have okay so let's say uh when i say combination so you will be having let's say n as five and m as uh three okay so how many index combinations you have uh can i say a zero comma one can i say zero comma two can i say zero comma three then one comma zero, then uh, one comma one, then one comma two. So for each and every number, you will be having three. So for such that you will be having n into m, m into n combinations. It means that the complexity of this particular approach would be two power n into m, two power m into m. So you will be for each and every combination you have two uh, choices either you have to go you can uh, go left you have to go right okay you will be moving both and you are saying this is not right and this is right so you are computing like that 
so can i say that the overall complexity of this approach as a big o of uh, 2 into sorry 2 power m into n yes i can and what will be the space complexity so we are not using an extra space but we are using an auxiliary space called stack space as you all know that recursion takes a stack space <coughs> so what will be the stack, stack space here so that stack space is uh, again big o of um, 2 power m into n that many combination that we are trying right <coughs> so is that a like uh, since it's an exponent this is not an accepted solution so the interviewer will ask you to optimize that further so whenever you have written a recursive solution and you got to you have to optimize that solution then you have to remember one thing you have to do with that with a dp first okay a dp so if you don't have uh, much time in an interview and if you felt there are some other solutions say as like bfs or any greedy approaches that is a uh, lower than a uh, dynamic programming or recursion then you can go ahead and explain it because basically uh explaining dp uh like solutions to an interview in an interview it takes a lot of time it will kill a lot of your time so i recommend you to directly jump into another solution if you have any other solutions in mind now here we don't have any other choice so we have to do it with a dp so we have a um, recursive code so now i will tell you how to re uh, convert this into dp simply okay that approach is called a memoation technique okay i will tell you that so what is a memoation technique so basically memoation means like let's say so um let's see first first so whether we can do this problem with dp or not so i will tell you that when can we go with dp so as you can see here i have highlighted few things so lcs of lcs of lcs of 2 comma 0 and 0 comma 0 so again what you can see so i am computing lcs of 0 comma 0 two times here so are you pretty much sure that i am computing only two times no let's say so i am computing 0 comma 0 here okay and if i go up again i am considering computing 0 comma 0 right do i need to compute these many times no so the answer of 0 comma 0 was 0 at any time because v and m were not matching so whenever i have computed 0 comma 0 the answer would be 0 only okay so for that do i need to compute that many times no so now think okay imagine if something happens like this so uh, whenever i have computed i have solved some uh, sub problem okay i will keep that in my memory okay so whenever again i am uh, i have uh, asked me to okay i have asked my mission to compute that particular problem again so my mission knows the answer okay what he what my mission can do I can, it can simply return the already previously computed answer so this is called a dp a dc is called a dp so how can we achieve dp using these recursive calls okay so i will be first telling the memoation so, uh, let's take a vector of vector so uh, before moving into that so how much space that we i need to assign so that will be my first question so how much space that we need so here you, for that you need to observe what are all the changing fa factors like changing indexes okay what are all the values changing in your recursive code so here my changing values are m and m so it means that i need to memorize this both i need to keep that in my memory okay so <clears throat> if so here uh, or two values are changing i need to consider two dimensional array or vector okay so if a three indexes like three values are changing then i need to consider three dimensional vector or three dimensional array okay if one index is changing or one value is changing then i can consider a one uh, dimensional array so here two so i will consider two dimension so vector of vector dp of n into m so 
so i will be initializing that with the minus one okay so why minus one let's say um i'm putting that minus one as in my empty space okay empty space i haven't solved any problem yet so whenever i'm uh, my particular uh, space my particular problem is not minus one it means that i can say that i have the solution for you okay so i will simply return that that's it so um, i need to pass here dp as well as my parameter or argument i will go top and i will implement it in my uh, now uh, so wherever fun i'm making a function calls then i have to make Here and here now what I need. so here let's say if dp of n m not equal to minus one not equal to minus one then return dp of n and m okay. so uh, I'm returning so where I'm storing the answer so here let's say so instead of returning your answer directly what you will do you will store that in your answer okay so like some place okay at your indexes then you will make a call to the next one okay so this is how a memoization solution looks like okay so let me simply uh, change my inputs then um let's try to run that code again so here let's say bd okay bd so now my ex i'm expecting to as my output okay let's save this and build this solution east and uh, we haven't got the answer as a two it is giving it is saying that there is some error cool have forgot Output as two. So, this is how we can convert our recursion solutions to the dynamic programming solutions. So, now let's try to analyze the time complexity and space complexity of this approach. Okay. So, what we did, what we did. So, basically, earlier we are uh, making a um, particular call uh, so many times. So, we have reduced that and we have memorized the answers to compute only once. Now tell me how many combinations that we have. We have n into m combinations. And how many function calls we can make now? We can make, uh, can I say we are making only m into n combination like function calls? How? 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 Let's say I have made one a function call once, like let's say 0, 1. And I have computed that and I have stored that answer in my memory. Okay, whenever I am going to compute that 0, 1 again. It is going to tell me you have already computed and take this answer okay so in that case i'm reducing my functional calls so i'm computing only m into m exactly all the uh, new combinations all the unique combinations okay so uh, so the time complexity of this particular approach would be big of n into m now coming to space complexity so we are uh, we are creating two dimensional vector the size of m sorry n m okay n into m so n rows and m columns so n into m so the space complexity of this approach will be big of n into m plus plus since we are making again recursive calls it would be again so how many recursive calls we are making we are making big of n into m okay so uh yeah so it's uh so uh bro we have uh, uh, converted our solution to the dynamic solutions is that enough no i guess so as you all know that recursive solutions are not that much efficient 
as it seems okay because it is using auxiliary space called like stack space okay so can we avoid that extra uh, recursive like uh, stack space yes we can how converting uh, like writing uh, iterate to dp called a tabulation so just keep this code in mind okay i am not using anything apart from this i will be just writing these steps again okay but simpler man okay let's try to write the tabulation method okay so again we will be uh, required to create a two dimensional array of uh, n plus 1 size this time zero okay i'm initializing all with zeros then i require if my s1 of i equal to s2 of a j <coughs> means that if my both the values are equal what i need to do i need to store dp of j equal to 1 plus dp of i minus 1 and j minus 1 now if this is not the case what i need to do I need to store minus one so at the end i will return i will uh printing i will be printing c out of d of n and m. so now uh, let's see the expected answer would be three for this particular output and let's say yes so we got three only this correct okay so now let's try to analyze this time and space complexity of this particular tabulation method so here it's very clear okay so n into m so we are using two for loops one with size of n and one in size with m so it's a simply m into n apart from that we are not doing any extra computations here so the time complexity is big o of n into m coming to space complexity we will be creating two dimensional vector with the size of n into m okay at max okay so the space complexity would be big o of n into m so are we creating any extra space no or are we have any stack space here no okay so this is the difference between memoation dp and a tabulation dp in some platforms if you submit memoation dp solution it won't accept because uh, you, as you all know that it's an stack space it consumes stack space so if you could submit this uh, tabulation method it will accept so you can say right so there is nothing much differences between both these solutions okay both are everything is same okay both are same okay no need to worry about that you can easily convert your memorization solution to the tabulation method and if you could submit this tabulation method it will get accepted okay done so happy coding see you in the next tutorial